All right, Tanner, are you excited about getting a property here in Miami? Yeah, I'm ready to get out of this town, man. Cool. All yeah. right. Well, you know, I'm excited to help you with this whole uh, buyer process. I know we, we talked. Um, I got a little bit better idea about what you wanted. I linked mm -hmm. you up with the lender, um, and I know all that's in process. So what I wanted to do today was kind of cover the whole entire process with you, show you the offer and all the paperwork that you would be signing when that time comes, and just to make sure that I get all the extra details from you and make sure that we're on the same page and that ultimately I can find you the best property that would best fit your needs. Cool? Cool. Cool. So you mentioned you're looking in XYZ neighborhood, right? Yep. Cool. Yeah. Have you expanded beyond that or are you pretty kind of locked into to this area? No, we like this area. Okay. Yeah. If I found another home that I think would fit your criteria, would you want me to send it to you or only this, this area? Uh, yeah, you could send it to us. Yeah, okay. if it's... Cool. Mm -hmm. So there will be some wiggle room there. I'm just wondering, right, in yeah. case I come across something and I'm like, oh, I think Tanner would love it. Yeah. I would know to send it to you or not. Yeah, so yeah, send, send it to you? It. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, in regards to time frame, I know we kind of initially discussed ideally getting your keys in like, you know, between 45 to 60 days. Is that still the case? Or if we find something like tomorrow, would you be ready, ready to go if you like it? Mm -hmm. uh, no, we need a little bit of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know your lease is ending in the apartment that you're in and you're going to have to do that whole transition, right? Right. Okay, cool. So, like, you you guys wouldn't be open to, like, seeing stuff immediately? You'd want to wait, like, maybe a week or two? No, we would be open to checking stuff out immediately. Okay, cool. And the reason I bring that up is the way the market is, if you really like something, it's important that you make a decision. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm kind of trying to coordinate. Because if we see something you like, but you want to wait because of the time frame, I would hate for you to lose on an opportunity because you want to wait. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay. So that, that, that's why I'm kind of wondering and I'm asking, hey, if we see something you like, right? We, mm -hmm. we can't play the, oh, well, we'll come back next week. Next week, it'll be gone. Okay. More than likely. Okay. That's, we, just, that's just realistic and I'm telling yeah. you that, right? Because I would hate to have you take a look at stuff and then, you know, you're not aware. Mm -hmm. If a property is priced properly in a good area, it's going to go quick. Okay. I'm just letting you guys know. So when it comes time where you're ready and we look, we need to be in a position where you're viable to make a decision. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. I heard you could do uh, like a, a contingency. Would we be able to do that or... Like if we put in an offer? Contingency, what do you mean? Like if in our offer we would have, um, like, I don't know. I mean, if we put it in our offer. You're a first time buyer. What do you mean contingency? <laughs> oh, you're pretending you're a seller, right? Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let, let's role play that. Yeah, that's definitely an option. Um, do you know typically when that was used the last time, like as a normal thing? Uh-uh. Back when the market crashed. Do you know why? Why? Because when you are contingent, right? If we create a list of the strength of offers, like somebody buying cash, somebody buying conventional, somebody buying FHA, somebody putting a lot of money down and creating that list. By you having a contingency, where do you think you are in that list in regards to strength of your offer? On the lower end. On the bottom. Yeah. And inventory, you know right now, is still low. You're aware, right? Mm-hmm. So if there's a lot of competition out there for the right priced home and we do submit an offer, what do you think the odds are of getting your offer accepted if it's contingent? Might be tough. Right. So ideally what you want to do, and we can coordinate this and we've done it plenty of times, is to time everything properly. So we get your home sold, make sure that you purchase non-contingent, and we make the transition smooth. Okay. Is the transition what is the concern for you? Like, you don't want to be homeless in between. Right, yeah, right? That, was my, that was my next question, if we should just wait until we get this out of the way. Cool. Because we can coordinate. We've done that, where we sell your home, you know, negotiate that, and then help you get your next home so you go from one home to the next. Is that ideally what you want? Yeah. Cool. So if we could do that without the contingency, you're good with it, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. That's how you would handle it. Okay, right? thank you. Sorry to... Cool. Sorry it's all good. It's all good. But you're a first-time buyer. It's all right. Got you. Maybe I should have explained that before we start. Right? <laughs> sorry. Sorry, cool. guys. All good. All good. All good. Um, cool. So, you know, we're looking here, here, here. Uh, you know, the lender told me this is pretty much the budget, right? Um, so, what are, like, the the top three or four things you guys are really looking for? Like, you really, like, it's almost like must-haves in your house mm -hmm. or in the property that you do buy. Mm -hmm. What would those be? Uh, we like an office space. Okay. 
um, good flooring. Mm -hmm. Nice kitchen. Okay. Good flooring. Could, could that be new carpet or is, does it have to be like laminate flooring, hardwood, marble? Yeah. Uh, we'd like laminate. Okay. Yeah. And Perfect. we don't want like stains in the, if there's carpet, you know, in the bedrooms, cool. no stains. It's got to be fresh and clean. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Good kitchen. All right. Good kitchen, you know, nice open kitchen. Okay. I mean, island. Cool. Okay. Got it. What would be some like deal breakers? You know, like having the intersection house. Maybe you don't want to be in a cul-de-sac, maybe having a park or a school nearby. Like, what are some, like, deal breakers or things that for you guys are like, yeah. we don't want that? Yeah, when the homes are too close, you know, you have those homes that are, like, five feet away from each other. And kind of like the townhouses, right, where you could literally open the window and touch the neighbor? Yeah, you don't exactly. Want that? You, you want know. a yard? Yeah, we want a okay. yard, you know. Okay. Um, not on, like, a busy highway or, like, next to a freeway. Okay, cool. Know, a busy, or a busy street. Is there, like, a minimum distance you want from the freeway? Just not right up against it. Cool. So, like, a, the street or two over is okay? Yeah. Okay. What else? Mm, we want to, We don't want it to be super old. Okay. You know, we don't want it falling apart. All right. So, a little bit more, at least in good condition or modern? Yeah. Got it. Modern, yeah. All right. A few upgrades. So, you don't want a fixer upper? No. Ideally, right. maybe, I mean, second option, but... Right, right. Not your first. Got not it. the first, no. Okay, cool. Um, Anything else? Pool would be cool. Pool, potentially, okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, newer roof. Newer roof, all right. Not too old. Got it. Okay, cool. Good to go. So we, we, we got some good lists here. We got a good time frame. We got the area that you want. All right. So there's, there's a, a specific process that I follow when it comes to selecting your home. Because ultimately, I'm looking for you and I'm suggesting however you're going to live there, not me, right? So I do like a multi-step process when it comes to this. So I have a system that I created that makes it very easy for buyers. So one of the first things that I want a buyer to do is see if they really like the area because you're not just buying the home, you're also buying the area, right? So before I set any appointments for you to go look at the house, I really always recommend, this has always worked well, I have my buyers check out the neighborhood during the day and at night to see if it's something that they like. Right? Because ultimately, if we like the house and I like the neighborhood, but you don't like the neighborhood, you're not going to want to live there. Right? Got it. Because I've lost count, Tanner, of how many times I pick these homes. We love them. Then as soon as we pull up around the corner, we see something we don't like. And the buyers are like, forget it. We don't want this house because yeah. of the neighborhood. Yeah. Right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to select like the top four or five, if we can find that many, mm -hmm. that fit the closest to your criteria. And today's Thursday. I'm going to have you guys drive by these areas today. Confirm. Go once, go twice, whatever you want. Check out the area. Check out a couple blocks away. Is there a Home Depot that's too close that you don't like, right? Check it out and see if you like the vibe during the day and at night. And if you give me the thumbs up, then what I'll do is I'll call them, I'll set the appointment, and we'll go look at them. Okay. Fair? Good idea. That'd be fun. Fair. Yeah. Cool. So, blah, blah, blah. We go through, da, da, da. I show you the MLS, blah, blah, blah. We pick, we pick five. Okay, cool. This is what we're going to do. And then when we look at these... I'm going to take you through a system, right? And I'm going to ask you to rate the houses from one to 10. I'm going to ask you to take pictures and videos, right? And every property we go to, I'm going to have you rank them and then compare it to the other ones. And then we'll create the list of the top three. Cool? Cool. Perfect. Got it. Perfect. So we're good on that. We took a look. I'm going to have you look at these homes, okay? So now you are aware of what happened um, with the whole lawsuit and the NAR settlement, right? Do you have any idea what happened or have you just kind of heard it? We've just heard okay. it a little bit. So something that, that I've always done with buyers is get a, an agreement between me and you that I'm representing you. I've always done this. However, by law now, we have to have this as realtors now. It's not an option anymore, it's by law. Mm. So that's what's changed. Before it was optional and I would do it, now it's by law. You have to commit to an agent and I have to commit to you. Make sense? Really? Okay. Cool. Yeah, so one of the forms that we're gonna cover today in regards to you know the other forms that I showed you, like the offer and all that, uh -huh. we're gonna cover this. This is an agreement between me and you that I'm representing you and that you are my client for X amount of time, right? Got it. And these are the parameters that I put on it. 30 days, blah, 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 these properties, right? Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable working with me for 30 days? I think we could deal with it. Yeah, because you know, on average right now, I'm finding people their dream home within a week or two. Okay. So I think 30 days is fair. If you're not happy with my service, we can just wipe our hands clean and end it. Cool? Cool. So I'm going to walk you through this, blah, blah, blah. I take them through. Obviously, it's going to be different for you guys in your area. So um, I do want to go through the, this last portion because this is the question that people have, right? Um, 
I would say probably 90% of the time, I negotiate my commission into the deal, meaning the seller and the commission that the listing agent got with the seller mm -hmm. is given to me. So let's say we buy a house, typically you pay nothing to me and the seller and that agent from their commission pay me. Mm -hmm. That's typically what happens and I make my two and a half or 3%, right? There is a clause in here though that if they refuse to pay or they're paying me very little, that you guys would agree to make any coverage there if necessary. Meaning if I find you your dream home, but for whatever reason they're saying, hey, we're not gonna pay Brian, you guys would agree to pay me that difference. Okay. Is that something you're cool with? In the event that that happens. Would there be a way to pull money out from the loan or pay you any way to do that? Like, so it's not coming directly out of our pocket? Yeah, well there's ways of negotiating it, of course. Okay. Now this is gonna be, or I'll put a pause on the role play, you can do that, and depending on the area that you guys are in, I don't know the legalities of it, but there are ways to structure it into the loan or figure out some way outside of the box that's completely legal to cover that cost, right? But for the sake of this role play, let's say no. Okay. I wish we could do that, Tanner. Unfortunately, we can't. So this is just an insurance policy to make sure that even if I find you your dream home and they refuse to pay me, that I still get paid. Okay. So how much would you want to get paid? Does the seller already have a set percentage? Like I said, that's negotiated, right? So typically I make 3%, right? Okay. And we, you know, we'll find the house, write up the offer, and I'll normally write it up in the offer for you to get the house and for me to get paid. And most of the time, that's what happens, no problem. This is just in the event that they're not willing to cover it. Whatever they cover, you would cover the difference. Got it. So if they paid me 500 bucks or a percent or whatever, you would cover the rest of that 3%. Okay. <laughs> I hope they offer some commission, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but give me, give me some, give me some pushback and say, yeah. no, we don't want to do that, right? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, we don't want to do that. I mean, if you could only show us homes that are offering a commission. What if one that's not offering commission is the one that you really want, though? Would you want me to hold back showing you the home just because there's a dispute on commission? Because mm -hmm. I feel like that would be me putting my interest first above yours, right? Yeah. Would you be able to negotiate with the seller? Potentially, right? And like I said, this is like an insurance policy. Yeah. In the event that that doesn't happen, like I told you, mm -hmm. most of the time it does. However, I don't want it to catch you by surprise at the end and yeah. say, hey, you got to pay me. Okay. I wanted to let you know up front. Okay. And this is why I disclose this and we do this up uh, front so we agree on everything before we even start working together. Well, could we put this on a hold and then if we find a home that we like, negotiate with the seller if they're not offering buyer's commission? And then if they are not open to paying a buyer's commission, then we'll just back out of that home. Well, you can do that regardless. However, the document and our agreement to work together, we have to have in place. Whether it's me or any other agent you choose, you're gonna, uh, have, to, you're gonna have to sign. This is just like I said, to make sure that I'm getting paid in the event that they're not willing to, to do it. Yeah, damn. That's yeah, tough if we really wanna move into a home that we like and we'd have to pay commission on it. Yeah. And like I said, most of the time it doesn't happen. But again, I do want to disclose that. Of course, of course. Yeah. Do you guys go cool with that? Have... Are you confident that I can get the whole, get you your home that you want, negotiate for you, and get you good terms and all that? Yeah. We know you can. It's just the sellers, you know? Yeah. And like I said, most, most of the time we do negotiate it. This is just a just-in-case. This is like an emergency button. Hmm. We have to sign this? Yes, this is the agreement. This is the buyer representation agreement that you sign where we work together for these 30 days that we outline. Okay, so it's, it's tied together? Yeah. Oh, man. What if we... <laughs> Keep going, bro. Like, uh, this, is, this is cool because yeah. then people can, can kind of see. But do you see how I'm not backing down? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to say no. And I feel like you're, it's not you coming at me. It's like, you know, it's, it's right. That's of course, the, that's of course. That's why I always point here and stuff. And, and again, and some people will walk away and you need to be okay with it. Like, I still feel like we're on the same team. Of course. But. Of course. Yeah. This is why I sit this way too. And I don't sit like across from you because that's more confrontational. Mm -hmm. But you notice I'm, I'm leaning away too. I'm giving you space. Yeah. 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 And I'm over here. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Just whatever you think would come next. Right. Yeah. You, or you can agree. I mean, it's up to you. Just whatever. Uh-huh. I'm trying to figure out what they would say if yeah. they don't. Well, I'll tell you this, Tanner. I'll give you my word that, of course, I'm going to fight tooth and nail to have them pay. And most of the time they do. 
So odds are you're probably not going to have to pay me anything. This is just in case. Okay. Because if I did find you your dream home and they happen to not pay me and I got you all the terms and got you everything you could ever want, would I deserve to be paid at that point? Yeah, of course. That's all that is. What if we don't have the money? And that's our problem? I guess so. All right, Brian, now I'm starting not to like you. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, man. It's well, cool. let, let's say somebody said, well, I don't have the money. Say, well, again, like I told you guys, depending on where you're at, right, everything is different, the laws, mortgages, and all that stuff, but there, there are ways, and I recommend all of you who are listening to this who are in real estate, talk to your lenders, and if your lender's unwilling to do something like that, find a new lender, right? The people who are thinking outside of the box that can put deals together, that figure out legal ways of doing this are going to be the ones that win. I myself and other agents that I know in different states, even your home state of Arizona, mm -hmm. have been getting paid without it coming out of the buyer's pocket that's worked into the loan or some other way and it's legal. You can do that. So you wouldn't even be in this scenario because he would say, well, can you work it into the loan? Potentially, yeah, we can find a way out of the box where you're not paying me out of your pocket. Right. Kind of like a buy down. Yeah, yeah. Or I could say, or we could just offer a little bit more on the house to cover the commission. So if I'm owed an extra two or $3,000, we can just stack that onto the offer and you're good to go. Got it. And then if you're paying that over 30 years, it's gonna add like an extra half a cent to your mortgage payment a month. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Oh yeah. I actually just watch that. There we show. go, right? Like, but again, I'm not saying that you need to say that because that might not be legal where you're at. It has to be a different way. So, but there are ways of doing it. But the main point is, stand firm. Now I know I gave you a condensed version and we didn't go over the whole buyer consult and the pre-call before meeting and all that, but that's basically what it is. And you want to say, hey, you know, this is what it is. And most people don't, most people aren't going to be like, oh yeah, go over the whole NAR lawsuit. But they don't care, most people. But just do this. And again, if you're going to work with the buyer, you're going to have to get it signed. You're going to have to go through this and work this and drill it. Or if you don't use my script, use somebody else's. But it's important that you do it because this, this is going to be necessary moving forward. Right? And now again, this is business as usual for us in Team BC because we've always done this. But for the people that this is new to, you better start drilling this and role playing it and figuring out what you're going to do and create some sort of system and structure for your business. Otherwise, you're going to be out because this is required now. And this is why lately a lot of people have been hitting me up. People come, oh man, I need to sign up for Distinguished Agent. Like people are just willingly like, sign me up now. Oh. Like I'm getting on these Zoom calls now. Before it was, well, you need to sell me on it. Now it's yeah. like, oh, I want to sign up now. I I, see. I, I'm signing up like two, three, four new people every week, dude, that are hitting me up. But because now this isn't, well, I'll do that later. It's, uh-oh, I need to do it, right? Mm -hmm.